Hello and welcome back. In today's video, we will have a look at the Liquify tool in Affinity Photo and see how we can use it with portrait photos. Let's kick off by looking how the Liquify tool works. In order to do that, let's make a simple grid by using four rectangles and use them as a base for a pattern layer. The pattern layer is pretty awesome. If you want to know more about it, let me know in the comments if you want me to make a tutorial video about it. I will also add a light yellow background and add some marker points in red to better see what will happen when we apply the liquify. Perfect. Let's apply the Liquify Live Filter. The Live Filter is amazing as it will allow you to make changes later. I believe the Live version of the Liquify Filter was added in version 1.9. Anyway, as you notice the Liquify does not apply on the grid. This is probably because it is clipped only to the group with the red dots. If I exit the liquify screen and move the filter out of the group with the red dots, it will apply to every layer beneath it. Let's double click it to open the liquify screen again. The most used tool in the liquify screen will be the push forward tool. This pushes everything forward based on your brush size. By the way, as with other brushes, you can enlarge or reduce the size of the brush with the brackets key on your keyboard. The Liquify dialog also includes a history panel, which allows you to easily go back and undo your actions. Let's have a look at the left push tool. This is very similar to the regular push tool, but it will try to keep one side of your brush straight. If you push left, the top will stay straight and the content will be pushed to the bottom. If you push to the right, the opposite will happen. If you push down, the left side will stay straight and the opposite when moved up. This tool feels a bit unnatural and I don't use it that much, unless there is indeed some straight parts that need to stay straight. The next tool is the twirl tool. It's like the twirl filter and rotates the brush area. You need to keep it pressed to increase the effect. Let's move on to the pinch tool. I always think it as pulling a sphere out of the canvas. The punch tool is the opposite, like pushing a sphere into the canvas. And here is the turbulence tool. This one is quite trippy and I have no idea how to describe it. All these last four tools are based on pressure. The longer you keep pressed on an area, the more the effect applies to it. Let us continue with the helper tools. We have the clone tool. Just like a regular clone tool, you can select an area and it will clone the applied mesh to your new painted area. The reconstruct tool is quite useful. You can see it as an eraser. The areas you paint on, you will reset the mesh to its default. And finally, we have our masking tools. With the freeze tool, you can paint on areas which you don't want to be affected. The last tool is the thaw tool, which is basically the opposite of the freeze and erases freezed areas. On the top center of the screen there is also a button to clear the mask. I will use this button. This is in a nutshell the liquify tool. Let's now add a portrait from the stocks panel and see what we can do with the liquify tool. Before continuing, I just want to point out that the examples I will be showing are extreme examples, just to better show you how the liquefied pool works. I'm not a big fan of making drastic changes with the liquefied tool. You should use it for subtle corrections. 
That being said, let's open the liquefied pool and see how we can make changes to this beautiful woman. Let's start with the pinched pool. This can be used to make the eyes and the lips bigger. Suppose we wanted to make the forehead a bit smaller. One mistake most people do is just applying the push and then trying to correct it. As you see, the hair is all messed up and it will take considerable time to make this look natural. Here is a way how you should do it. Freeze the area that should not move. In this case, the bottom part of the image. And use a big brush to cover the whole area and then push. Much better. Let's press done and look at the before and the after. Okay, the proportions are not correct, but just only looking at the hair, you would not guess it was liquefied. Let's open the liquefy filter again and slim down the face. Same idea, freeze the areas that need to stay on the same place and then push. Let's check our results again, looking much better. But if you look closely, there is an unnatural band in the hair. I will fix that. This time we can use a smaller brush to fix those areas. For demonstration purposes, Let's make her nose slimmer. Same style, freeze the areas that are not allowed to be modified and then gently push until you're happy. The before and the after. We changed her quite a bit, but it looks pretty convincing. Now, here is another photo. I already applied a liquefy to it. When I disable it, you can see the difference. If we open the liquefy, you can see I froze the areas around her face, so I would not get any distortions there. Let's make her neck a bit slimmer. While doing that, I created this unnatural looking distortion. With a small brush, I need to make it look natural again. Wow, affinity crashed. Doesn't happen that much. Anyway, let's open affinity again and continue. With a small brush, I will also gently make her eyes a bit bigger. Awesome! There is another use of the liquify tool that you probably haven't seen before. At least I haven't seen anyone doing it. Suppose we want to apply some kind of a color effect to the composition. Let me add a simple effect with a gradient which will give it a summer sunset look. Here is where the liquify comes to play. The gradient is linear and I want more of the yellows in our face. I can paint or use the smudge tool. But what I like to do in this case is use the live liquify filter to push the yellows to her face. It allows me to control how the effect is applied in a non-destructive way, which is pretty awesome. I can always go back and modify or reset it. This is one of the reasons why I like the live liquify version so much. 
I hope you found this video useful and has given you some ideas on how you can use the Liquify tool. That's it for today's video. You can keep watching until the end of the video to see the end result of this image. Thanks again for watching. Thank you.